In this video, we're going to go over three practice problems involving relative motion. A train is moving with a velocity of three meters per second to the west relative to the ground. A bocce ball is on the train rolling to the east with a velocity of 0.5 meters per second relative to the train. From the ladybug's perspective at the bottom of your screen, what is the velocity of the bocce ball? So let's get this straight in our head here. We're, we have a, a train moving to the west. On that train, in that train is a bocce ball rolling to the east. And stationary on the ground is a ladybug. And we want to describe the motion of the bocce ball from the frame of reference of the ladybug. Okay, let's take a look at this here. Just above my head here, you're going to see a train coming and you can see the bocce ball moving to the east while the train moves to the west and our little ladybug at the bottom of the screen is observing this. So to describe this motion, first thing I would do is get our three objects set up. So let's do our train, the bocce ball, and the ladybug. Next, I have an equation that's very straightforward I wanna show you about. And it's straightforward because it's easy to set up. I know you would have probably agree this is a little more convoluted than the examples I spoke about in the first video on relative motion, but they're still relatively simple. Okay, so we have the velocity of BC. Well, that would be the velocity of the ball with respect to the ladybug's reference frame. That's what we're trying to solve for. What you're going to do is you're going to add the velocities in such a way using the subscripts, notice how I have them, where the end subscripts will cancel out. So those will cancel out when you're writing these expressions and you're left with the B and the C on either end, which gives you the velocity of B relative to C. So in other words, whatever's on the inside of our subscripts will cancel out. Whatever's on the far, either far end is what will remain. And so that's why they're pretty easy to get these set up. You just have to pause, think about it for a moment and get going with it. Let me show you what I mean. So the velocity of the ball with respect to the ladybug's reference frame. These are vector quantities. So we have 0.5 meters per second well, that's the speed of the bocce ball relative to the train. And that's what was BA, train and bocce ball. And we're going to add the speed of the, uh, of the train with respect to the ladybug. Okay, well, the ladybug's stationary and on Earth, so that would just be the um, speed or velocity of three meters per second to the west and we get a relative velocity of 2.5 meters per second to the west. So signage does matter here. So if you think about the animation from the ladybug's vantage, the bocce ball was still moving to the west, but with a smaller magnitude than the train itself. Again, that is relative to the ground, which is the ladybug's frame of reference, okay? Now, let me show you how to do this with vectors, okay? Which I mentioned in the previous video. Some students find this an, as an easier approach. So the first vector represents the velocity of the train with respect to the ground. So I've chosen to draw it to the left. And the second vector here is the velocity of the uh, bocce ball in the train. And it's moving with only 0.5 meters per second. So I've drawn its arrow in the opposite direction. It's moving east, train's moving west, but I've drawn it to represent the magnitude, which is much smaller than the magnitude of the velocity of the train. Now what we can do is simply fill in the vector using vector addition really, and we get this white vector which represents 
the 2.5 meters per second and it's pointing to the left in the negative direction. So that would be 2.5 meters per second to the west. And so that's a very simple way of solving these problems as well. In fact, in a lot of my uh, solutions to some of the problems in unit one toward the end, I'll actually be using vector addition more than any equations because for me, it's, it's intuitive. Okay, but I want to obviously teach you both. Look at this problem here. I have a little twist here. So everything's the same except for what you see in yellow. The ladybug is now moving to the west at 0 0.5 meters per second relative to the ground. So let's look at what this motion would look like. We have our ladybug moving off to the left. We have our train bocce ball. It's moving to the left, but the ball's moving to the east or right relative to the train. So there's quite a bit here going on, but we can still use the same approach, guys, and it's not that bad. We have our three objects here, and we're trying to find the same thing, the velocity of the bocce ball relative to the ladybug, except this time the ladybug is moving to the left at a constant velocity. Remember, we're dealing with inertial reference frames where the object is either stationary for the frame of reference or moving at a constant velocity, but is not accelerating. So that's the case here with our ladybug moving to the left at a constant speed. Now let me show you this. So we have a, this part set up the same way where I've written it where I'll have my B and C subscripts on the outside and A, which is the velocity of the train, will actually cancel out, okay? Leaving me with the velocity of the ball um, with respect to the ladybug's inertial reference frame. Okay, now here's the deal though. If I want the velocity of the train with respect to the ladybug, okay? Remember, those are both moving off in the west direction, okay? I can use this equation that I taught you about in the previous video, because I know many of you are saying, wait a minute, in the first video you were showing us this where we were subtracting the velocity of one from the other and it worked out fine. Now all of a sudden you're adding and throwing in the vectors and all that. Hey guys, guess what? It's whichever way is most intuitive to you. But I want to show you and I also want to reiterate in the last video I prefaced this equation saying these velocities are relative to the ground. So using this equation from the previous video, I can solve this very easily. I have the velocity of the train relative to the ground, which is negative three meters per second, minus the speed of the ladybug relative to the ground, which was 0 0.75 meters per second in the negative direction or to the west. So pay attention to signage. I can actually solve for the velocity of the train with respect to the ladybug, both of which are moving at constant speeds, and I can find it to be 2.25 meters per second to the west. Pretty cool. Now I can use this number here and I can use it to solve this equation here. All right, so plugging that number in, I have 0 0.5 meters per second is the uh, velocity of the bocce ball relative to the train. That was the V subscript BA. And now I'm adding the velocity of the train relative to the ladybug, which we just found to be negative 2.25 meters per second, and adding those two together, I get an answer of negative 1.75 meters per second, which is, is basically saying that from the ladybug's frame of reference, the bocce ball is moving to the west at 1.75 meters per second, which is pretty awesome. Now, let me show you another way, okay?
So here, the velocity of the bocce ball with reference to the ladybug's frame of reference, we can actually use this equation from up top here, the one that I referenced in the first video. And you can see it works. You just have to have the velocity of the red bocce ball relative to the ground. And you're given its velocity relative to the train. So you have to figure that out. And we did that in the first problem in this video, and we found it to be 2.5 meters per second to the west. So be careful. But if you know that, then we can plug in its velocity relative to the ground. We can subtract the velocity of the ladybug relative to the ground. And lo and behold, we get the exact same answer of negative 1.75 meters per second. Now in the final problem here, we have a, an object moving in two dimensions. So we're going to be using um, tip to tail vector addition and orthogonal addition to solve these types of problems. Arguably, they're easier than any of them. So you know I love my birds. We have a hummingbird and it's flying due east at 10 meters per second. The wind is blowing to the north at two meters per second. And you're asked, what is the hummingbird's velocity relative to the ground? Let's set up our vectors here. So we have our hummingbird's vector. It is drawn to the right in the positive direction. The bird is flying to the east. Magnitude of its velocity, 10 meters per second. Tip to tail vector addition, now I can represent this north vector and its much smaller magnitude of two meters per second. And then looking at the hypotenuse or the resultant vector gives us the bird's velocity relative to the ground. So the bird will have a flight pattern something like this, okay? And so it's going to be um, Pythagorean theorem time. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. That's all we're doing for these problems. So putting in our values and taking the square root, we can solve for the magnitude of the hummingbird's velocity. Don't forget, vectors have both magnitude and direction. So we're now going to use an inverse trig function to find the degrees to be about 11.3 degrees. And lastly, we're going to use cardinal directions for our final answer, that the velocity of the bird with respect to the ground is 10.2 meters per second at 11 degrees north of east. And guys, that's really about it. This sums up the uh, frame of reference videos, and um, we've really covered this in, in great detail. So I'll see you guys in class.